Hi everyone, my name is Jack Pillimer and we're back again to a Time to Know virtual lesson. Uh, this time we'll be focusing on the uh, Metsav unit. The Metsav unit is a theme unit in the fifth grade curriculum. The main aim of the unit is to help pupils sharpen their skills that they need to succeed in this very important national test. It is not intended to replace any of your regular teaching, I must stress this, but merely to focus on certain test taking skills, certain strategies, test requirements, so that students fulfill their potential. After all, everyone wants this to happen. You, your principals, your inspectors, everyone wants the students to do their best on this Maidsaf test. And Time to Know has constructed a special unit to help them and you achieve this. So let's see what will we, we be covering. Um, if you notice, we're going to do an overview of the content of all the lessons. Um, we're going to be looking at listening skills, reading comprehension, with a major focus on how to read with an awareness of genre, understanding questions. I'm not going to give much time to it, but we're also going to talk a little bit about writing. Perhaps the most important aspect of what I'm going to say today is how this should all be blended learning, computer activities combined with worksheets, and also what we have in every theme unit, developing vocabulary, the PAL, this is no different, we have this in the Metsav unit too. So if you now look at the uh, table you have in front of you, um, this table is really very important. It basically will give you the information that you need to make your decisions. Uh, there are 12 lessons, um, each with a specific focus. You should note that the Metsav lessons differ from the regular theme lessons in the following ways. There are no differential materials. The logic here is that the Metsav sets a common standard for all grade 5 students uh, against which they are measured. Uh, time to Know preserves this common standard. The print materials, the attached worksheets, that are, that's what I'm referring to, are often integral to the lessons in the unit and not as, uh, as might some, some might think, an additional optional um, choice that you have. The, uh, the print materials must be used in, in many of the lessons for the lessons to be effective. The computer lesson in many cases provides only the initial focus uh, and an explanation with a little practice and this is followed by pencil and paper work, the attached worksheets. They need to be printed and handed out together with the appropriate computer lesson. Here again the logic is that the students will be tested on paper and not on computer, so that they should practice on paper. You can find them as an attachment in every lesson. I'll, I'll be showing this to you in a minute. Um, the introductory animations are in Hebrew or in Arabic and not in English. Uh, some teachers ask why. The point is we're not teaching English in the Metsav unit. Uh, that's not the function. We're raising awareness of how to answer questions, what to think about, how to work, and so very often the uh, animations um, are uh, dealing with uh, skills that they should know in their mother tongue. Um, they focus on legitimizing anxiety and reducing it, how to listen for specific information, how to identify different genre formats, um, and so on. Okay, so now we've moved over onto the DTP. Here's my home page. As I would normally do, I would go to Planning, Tichnun, and I have brought over my Metsav unit onto my shelf. And as you can see, I've got Lesson 1, Lesson 2, Lesson 3. Lesson 1 consists of words, which is the PAL, and then we've got listening on a sentence level, and listening on a word level, and so on. I could look at this here, but I think I prefer to show this to you uh, in the Tochen uh, Inyanim. Uh, so we're going to move over to the Tochen Inyanim. It's a lot easier to see in numerous lessons. Uh, to move from one to the other, you should know that. That's it's always the best place to, if you want to get a feel for what's there, the best place is to do it there. So we're going to move over. We're choosing uh, grade 5 materials. 
We're going to go down now through the units until we find the Metsav unit. And here I can see is the Metsav unit. It tells me, as you can see, 12 lessons. I click on it once and it will allow me to see the contents of each lesson. And we're going to start off with lesson one. Lesson one starts off, as I said, with a PAL, but we're not interested in that. We want to see the first animation. The first animation is essentially deals with listening comprehension and reducing anxiety. So let's watch it for a moment and uh, see what you think uh, could be useful to use here, why it might be useful for you. Click. I'll just stop here for a moment to point out that the idea here is one, to legitimize the anxiety, two, to make the student familiar with the layout, the instructions, and the requirements of a Metsav listening uh, activity. Um, and we're going to, I'm not going to go through this whole animation, I'm going to let it run a bit and then maybe jump to the end. The aim is to teach the student how to listen carefully, how to understand instructions carefully. So perhaps I'll just jump on a bit. Um, let's go on here perhaps to here and see what it's got for us. We, we're continuing with the instructions and let's watch. And write the correct number in each box. You will hear each word twice. Okay, I think that by this point you've got the idea. It goes through and explains to the students exactly what to do. Uh, so that will be what we'll be looking at, the, the animation. The animation is followed by an activity. So if you look here, there's an activity on, a sent on word level and an activity on sentence level. If I'm looking at the activity on word level, it would be this. Make it bigger for you. It's listening comprehension. Let's go for it. Hungry. Hungry is number one. And the student moves the word the, the number, number one, to the right position. A tie. A tie is number two. And he has to move to the right position. So uh, that is the activity that he would have to do there. On the sentence level, it would be much the same. But instead of being words, there would be sentences which are said. So the student then practices. Click. And of course he gets the help through the animation and then there is practice activity that follows it. Okay, so now we've looked at lesson one. Uh, let's see what we've got in lesson two. Lesson two has the same notion of listening, the same, sorry, the same subject is listening. Um, uh, I think here you're going to find something slightly different, which is very, very important. The, the students are given this screen. Notice it. It's a screen which seems to have no instructions. But the subject of this uh, lesson is understanding instructions. So they, pl they press and listening and understanding instructions. So they press on the sound. Copy the second word into the box. They have to understand that they've got to copy the second word into the box, which in this case would be foot, and they would copy it into the box. They'd go on and do question two, which is something similar, and then they'd go on and do question three. Choose the two kinds of fruit. You would be teaching and making sure they understand the words two, kinds, first, second, choose. Choose the two kinds of fruit. Put the blue ball next to the orange slippers. 
choose the two kinds of furniture. I think you'll agree with me this is a wonderful listening activity. It requires thought, it requires ability to understand, it's interesting, it's challenging, certainly worth doing. The lesson number three is totally different. It jumps onto um, uh, the subject of WH questions and teaches WH questions. Very similar to the way you might do it in a regular textbooks. textbook. If you notice here, you've got a short text and then a set of questions, each time focusing on a different WH word. In this case, it's when. Josh does his homework every day, so they've got to choose. Uh, sorry, on Tuesdays and Thursdays he plays football at 7 o'clock and he has, the student has to choose the, next, the correct answer. And so it goes on. Who does his homework every day? What does Ju Josh do on Tuesdays and Thursdays? The text changed, now we've got Mandy. And so it goes. It's basically making sure that the students have an understanding of the WH question words. This is followed by all kinds of nice games. I like this one particularly, if I'll show you this one. Uh, it's a puzzle game uh, which uh, in which the students have to identify which WH words go with which phrases. Um, so we've got here, for example, the WH words on the top, uh, who, where, and when, and so if obviously for who would be you, and would be her, and would be, let's say, Tom, by clicking here and clicking here, they change places, and you've got to organize, you've got to organize, sorry, it would be his son would go here, you've got to organize all three columns so that the students know that when you say who, these are the kind of answers you can expect. When you say when, these are the kind of answers you can expect. I'm now going to jump onto the next lesson, which is again a jump, because this lesson, number four, it is essential to use the worksheets that Time to Know has provided. So let's move on to lesson four, and you'll see what I mean. Lesson four, oops, moved a little too fast. Lesson four has to be followed by a worksheet in order to achieve its effect. I'm going to play the animation. Click. I'm going to just stop here to, to say that you should notice that the emphasis here is on the genre of recipe writing, recipe reading, that there is the name of the recipe, there are the ingredients, and then there are the instructions on how to prepare the dish that has to be prepared. There's the vocabulary that goes with recipe writing, numbers, the amounts, and so on. This is all to be taught, and that means when they see a recipe, they'll recognize it. It'll be much easier for them to answer questions if they have internalized uh, metacognitively what a recipe looks like. I'm just going to stop here yet again. Assuming you were uh, screening this on a whiteboard, you could simply ask the students to draw a line between the objects on the right and the ingredients on the left. Talk about the amounts. Talk about the vocabulary. Okay, so as I pointed out here, uh, what is important is that the students are given the worksheets that are followed or printed. We've got puzzles to play with genres, and we've got a game, and we've got some writing that I'm not going to relate to now, that's to teach how to write a list. I want to go where it says the mates of worksheets. You've got mates of worksheets which have Hebrew instructions, and you have mates of worksheets with Arabic instructions. Same like we've got 
the actual animations in Hebrew and Arabic. So if you've got Hebrew speaking students, you will use the Hebrew. If you've got Arabic students, they will watch uh, the Arabic uh, animations. There's full support for both languages here. Uh, so if I want to look at the, I'm going to take the Hebrew instructions worksheet, you'll see this is what you are given and this is what the students are given. So there's nothing here unless you actually go to the Kvatsim Tzurafim, the attached worksheets. You find them here, you click on them, you open them up and you print them. You can also upload them back into Time to Know um, and use them frontally, but uh, normally you would want them to actually write on the worksheets. I've prepared the worksheets, I want to show you what they look like, so I'm going to just move over to these worksheets and you can see why the animation provides the introduction, but the worksheets provides the work that you want them to do. So uh, let's move over now to, let me try and find my worksheets. Oh, okay, there we are, missed it. Sorry about that. Okay, so here, for example, um, wait a moment, is the worksheet. This is followed by a second worksheet, which has got questions based on this recipe. So you've taught the recipe as a genre, now you practice it on a page so that the students get to know what to do. Okay, so you hand out the worksheet, you get them to work, you work with them on the recipe, on the reading comprehension, then you hand out, as you can see in front of you, the uh, questions which, is, which follow it. This is an example of open-ended questions. You'll find the worksheets with all kinds of questions. This is just one example. I suggest you look at all the worksheets on, in each of the lessons to decide which to use. I'm going to move on now to two more things and then I think it's time to call it a day. Uh, I think you've got the idea. Um, let's go uh, back and look at uh, lesson, I think I'm going to choose lesson number eight. Lesson number eight um, deals with a subject that most of us like to teach, and that is how to read, how to skim and scan, how to find information that you need without reading everything. Again, I'm going to, it's called reading a poster. And we will watch a little bit of it. Then I'll look at writing, and then I think that will be it. Click. I'd just like to point out, in the previous lesson, they were exposed to this particular text, so it won't be new for them. How does she know that? Because she recognizes the genre. We've been working with genre. What would that mean? You might stop the uh, animation in the middle just like I've done. Remember, you're the teacher. The animation is your tool. You use it to teach. It's not meant to be given and left alone hanging. You're meant to use it as a tool for teaching these skills. All right, I think that's enough. Um, I'm going to now uh, move on to the, the well, I, I want to stress again, sorry, that this must be followed up by the worksheets, and I'll remind you the worksheets are here. Each lesson has worksheets, Hebrew instructions, Arabic instructions. You've got to go in. In this lesson, you'd go in, you'd open up here. I've showed this to you once before. You've got the attached um, uh, work pages. You open it up. You download it to your own computer, you print it, you upload it to Time to Know if you want. 
You can do what you like with it. Feel free to use it, but it, it is a, it's the, the part that supplements the animations and the games and the activities. Um, otherwise, students will be, you'll be shortchanging your students. They won't get enough practice. Uh, so I want to just jump perhaps to the last lesson, which is lesson 12, um, and lesson 12, the Metsav lesson, which is, I've just got an idea for you here. Uh, it's pretty simple here. We're given, you'll see in a minute, um, let's say what this says, let's go for the instructions. Bill, Will, Dan, and Boof the dog went to the park. Their friend took some pictures. Look at the picture and describe what you see in the park. Uh, we can read it quicker than the, the narrator says it. Uh, students also have the Hebrew. Okay, so this is the picture that they see. I actually prefer, let's say, it will be easier for us to take. I think I prefer the second picture. Close, it will be clearer. Okay, and here you would be showing this on the board frontally. Now, I suggest what you do is that you get the students to suggest vocabulary, sentences, ideas, and you write it up on the board. Then, into their notebooks, they write the description of the picture. I say that because you're practicing for the Metzav, describing pictures. This is a way of preparing them. This is a way of getting them used to it, thinking of ideas. You do it frontally. Uh, I'd like to just sum up by saying that the time to know unit is intended to be used to sharpen students' skills, to reduce their anxiety, uh, deals with metacognitive concepts, it deals with uh, WH questions, which are so central to any test, uh, it, it focuses on different, di different types of questions, it is essential that it's blended, that you join together the computer work together with the uh, work on uh, work pages. Um, there is this, I didn't deal with it at all, but there's the PAL element to teach the vocabulary. Uh, I think it should be useful. It certainly should be fun. Uh, thank you very much and goodbye.